So my research is about kind of the first chapters of evolution, um, specifically repeated evolution in the Mexican tetra um, cave fish system. I'm Nathan Swanson. Uh, I'm a researcher in, the, in Suzanne McGaw and Andrew Simon's lab uh, doing conservation science. There are fish that have been living in caves for hundreds of thousands of years and they have developed through this long time that they've been in the cave very different morphological and behavioral differences. In Mexico, where they're super highly derived, um, it's very obvious what the differences are. There are, in cave fish, they've actually lost uh, their eyes, so their eyes never really fully develop, and they also have lost all of their pigment, um, so they're fully albino. Specifically, what my research focuses on is a new offshoot of these populations that are actually invasive in Texas. They were introduced through the bait fish industry, and we have very solid dates on when they were introduced. One population in 1908 and one in the 1950s, and subsequently they have invaded cave systems as well. And we have, again, solid records on when those invasions actually happened. Uh, so we essentially have fish that are going through the same process as these super old Mexican cave fish that have evolved over hundreds of thousands of years that are just starting their evolutionary trajectory over the last uh, 60 to 100 years. So what I look at is behavioral and morphological differences between surface and cave populations of this species of fish. So in order to look at the behavioral differences, we run a variety of assays. We acclimate them to our sleep arenas, um, during which um, we're feeding them on a regular schedule. And then we record them for 24 hours in order to measure wall following behavior and uh, the amount and um, duration of sleep um, that they're experiencing. From there, we take them to our morphological analysis, which involves having them swim in a dye that will fluoresce green um, under, the, under the correct lighting. And this highlights their neuromasts, which are vibration receptors in their, in their face and along their body. Um, we then image them and we count the number and uh, the size of neuromasts on their, one of their suborbital bones, which is a bone that sits right on their cheek. Through this, we've found that surface fish have fewer neuromasts compared to their cave conspecifics. We also analyze the size of their eyes, positioning of their fins, and we also quantify the, the amount of pigment that they have in their, in their skin by counting the actual pigment cells or melanophores. Really getting to understand how quickly evolution can happen, especially when something is exposed to like such a harsh environment like you would experience in a cave. I think that's super valuable to be able to start to, to look at how species are forming and how quickly if you want to conserve an organism, or in my case, since my fish is uh, more on the invasive side in Texas, if you want to get an understanding of what, what effect this uh, organism is having on the environment that they're invading, you really need to understand a lot of the basic biology before you can get into some of the more complex stuff that would really have kind of major management uh, implications. So this is kind of like a first steps in uh, learning what we need to do in order to conserve these environments. There's also implications that could transfer to other cave fish because there are throughout the world cave fishes that are super endangered. Understanding again the basic biology and some of the ways that these fish have evolved is pretty important in conserving them. I just think it's such a cool thing that we actually get to look at the first kind of chapters of this evolutionary story that we're already seeing an ending to um, somewhere else in the world.